Are you struggling with feeling hip thrusts in your glutes? Do you suffer from back pain when performing hip thrusts? Do you feel hip thrusts working more in your quads and hamstrings than in your glutes? If this is your case, or if you simply just want to learn more about the hip thrust, keep on watching this video. First, let's briefly talk about how to set up for the hip thrust. First, let's talk bench height. So the recommended bench height for a hip thrust should be about 13 inches to 16 inches, depending on your height and on your anatomy. Personally, I prefer 16 inches, but it really depends on how your body is. Most people will use a bench that is too high and this will make it difficult for you to set up and get propped up onto the bench in a safe manner. Usually people who use a bench that is too high will tend to be complaining about lower back pain, um, feeling the hip thrust in their quads, so the height here is super important. Now let's talk feet stance. So when you place your feet too close to the bench, you will tend to feel this movement more in your quads rather than in your glutes. Same thing, when you place your legs too far from your body, so you place your feet too far out, you will tend to feel your hamstrings working more than your glutes. So finding that sweet spot in the middle will tend to help fix this problem. I recommend about a 90 degree angle with the floor um, and to keep in mind to always keep your shins vertical. Along with that, keeping the knees slightly out or keeping them from caving in is actually essential in a head thrust for you to feel your glutes working. So if you feel that your knees keep caving in, it's either because one, you have a hip mobility issue, so make sure to properly warm up before your leg day. And two, you probably have a weaker glute medius. So working on strengthening that glute medius will help you not only in a hip thrust to keep your knees out, but in a squat as well. So exercises to help with that could include um, seated banded abductions, clamshells, etc. You can also place a band around your knees while performing the hip thrust if that helps you keep in mind to push out the entire time. Now let's talk back pain and neck pain when performing a hip thrust. Of course, back pain can come from different things, so it's best to consult with a professional if you keep having that lingering back pain. However, if your back pain only comes up in hip thrust, chances are you're not performing the movement right. I'm gonna give you four cues to keep in mind when performing the hip thrust. Step one is when you're performing the hip thrust, your head should not be moving. So instead of going up and down, you should keep that chin tucked in and your head in the same position the entire time. I like to think about someone pressing down on my head as I'm performing the hip thrust. So you should keep your chin tucked in and your gaze in the same spot the entire time. I usually like to aim for somewhere in the middle in front of me rather than up because when you look up, chances are your neck is gonna go back. Step number two is to line up the bench with the bottom of your shoulder blades. So a lot of people will only put the bench over here and chances are you're gonna be sliding down. So you really need to line up the bench with the bottom of your shoulder blades. If you need a second to get yourself propped up on the bench properly, do that because it's gonna take your set to the next level. Step number three is to move from the sternum down. A lot of people do not do this or do not know about this and it's okay. That's why I'm making this video today. So when you're keeping your head tucked in, you want to think about moving from the sternum down. Your chest should not be moving, should keep your back, upper back on the bench the entire time, and you're really moving from the sternum down. Step number four, this step is crucial, and it's often the reason why people complain about lower back pain, and it's because they are hyperextending either at the bottom or at the top. So they're going into an anterior pelvic tilt, which is what we do not want can be dangerous for your lower back especially under heavy loads when you're performing the hip thrust but you should focus on keeping your back in a neutral position the entire time and then once you reach the top think about going into a posterior pelvic tilt so tucking that tailbone in and squeezing your glutes now this can be a weird example but what i like to think about is an ice cream scoop scooping ice cream that's kind of what you want to happen at the top and this just helps me visualize that tucking cue at the top of the movement. So make sure you are holding the bar. A lot of people think that, you know, they don't need to hold the bar, but you really need to be holding it. So you place the bar in the crease of your hips. And then as you're thrusting up, you want to be holding the bar and slightly pushing it forward at the top. Now, if you're still wondering if you should include these in your programming, I highly recommend them because hip thrusts are not only great to improve the size of your glutes, they're great to improve the strength of your glutes, and they are great to improve power at the lockout of your deadlift and power at the bottom of your squat.
movement is a great overall movement for your posture as well since we know that strong glutes are super important for a good healthy posture here are my tips and tricks for the hip thrust make sure to save this video and share it with your friends if you liked it and i will put a little picture over here to summarize all the points i touched on during this video so you can just screenshot that and keep it for our next training sessions Thank you.